Evening everyone, um, I'm in the National Rail Museum and in a slightly strange aspect, I'm standing at the feet of George Stevenson, who's often touted as the father of the railways, which is the modern railways possibly. But um, uh, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Well, it's because uh, it's the 120th birthday of, well, it was at the weekend, 120th birthday of, of windscreen wipers. And it kind of, this is going to be a mildly chaotic episode. When is that ever not true, in fairness? But I wanted to think about a couple of things. Well, one of those things is why, given that the, 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 one of the major contributors to windscreen wipers was a, a woman inventor, we don't see many statues of women inventors around. And it's not because the lion's share stuff was done by men. That's just not, it doesn't actually stand up to scrutiny when you pay a lot of attention. It's how many inventions do we simply not attribute to anyone because it was thought of by a woman and we don't hear anything about it. Well, anyway, stood underneath Stevenson got me thinking about that. So this episode is going to be a little bit about musing on what inventions do we not think of or, or, or do we simply not know the attribute, you know, who, who to attribute them to. And um, also, can we find the oldest set of windscreen wipers in, this, in, in the National Rail Museum? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of part of the other mission today. Uh, you can see a lot of construction going on. Um, without further ado, I, I don't know if there's, a, there's there's not a British Rail Class 171. Eh, wrong oh, there is. It's the uh, the Southern Railway. Southern had 171s, the, the little diesel multiple units for, for use where there isn't third rail down in the Southern region. Um, yes, uh, so they do exist. So uh, wrong. So this episode is sponsored by the, the Class 171 <laughs> Turbo Star. I think it's different only from a 172 only because it has different couplers. Uh, that's it. Anyway, so without further ado, let's um, welcome you all to tonight's Rail Natter. And as the Intercity 225 fades away, yes, I'm here at the round table with a Sterling single behind me and then a lovely 060. Is that a Terrier? I don't know if it's a Terrier, but it's, it's a fine looking brown beast 060 tank engine sat on the turntable. We're surrounded by other things. Um, Before I press on, it, it's worth reminding everyone there's loads of stuff going on at the National Rail Museum in the moment, which you can find out about by going back to episode 156 when we had a sit-down chat with Charlotte Kingston um, to find out what the hell was going on. It was a, a lovely chat, actually. Um, go back, uh, have a look at that to see what's going on. But obviously, uh, the first, uh, a few key things, uh, if you're going to go and have a look. Uh, first of those being um, the, the old entrance or rather the old new entrance is no longer working you have to go back to the old old entrance which is uh, kind of a long lean road a little bit you can see the old concrete they've, they've painted it up it looks quite nice actually I quite like it the original museum entrance there uh, the other thing is that the, the, the station hall the station hall is out of action um, and so is the underpass that's all gone so only you, know, you see transformation in progress and um, so only great hall uh, because they're doing lots of stuff and the first new thing opening is going to be Wonder Lab which will be very exciting let us start by uh, first of all, having a, a quick idea, look, there, there's, there's no windscreen wipers on that, but there are definitely windscreen wipers on this thing. This, you know, this, uh, class 20. There are definitely windscreen wipers, there's no windscreen wipers on any of these, I mean, that doesn't have a window. Rocket, no window. Uh, but what about, I wonder over here. Nothing on my favourite steam local in here, the old austerity. But if I go around here to the slightly older vehicle, well, not older, early, the turn of the century stuff, there is a windscreen wiper above my head here on this old, uh, this classic old multiple unit. So, hmm, it's the four sub, it's a motor coach from 1925. That's 1925. The invention of the windscreen wiper actually dates back to 1903. And it, Whilst Mary Anderson, who is, you know, the, if you like, the hero of the piece, uh, did interesting history on Mary Anderson. We'll go back and look up. She, oh, in fact, let's, 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 in fact, let's, I'm going to do an orange screen. Let's talk, while I'm wandering around the Great Hall with the noise all around us, let's talk about the invention of the windscreen wiper. Let's talk about Mary Anderson. Bleep. 
So who actually did invent the windscreen wiper? Um, I think this is okay. I, I think I do some waffly chat about the history uh, in my walk around, but actually, um, no matter where I edit in this segment, uh, let's let's have a little more of a detailed chat about it. Let's let, uh, avoid my cop out history and actually talk about windscreen wipers um, because there's some interesting history and um, and it's interesting to talk about how Mary Anderson. Um, as the generally attributed inventor fits into this and why um, pedants say actually she wasn't the inventor, but then pedanting pedants like me who like to out pedant the pedants say, no, actually she, she was. Um, so let's, let's do this. Let's talk about it. And actually um, here's a map of the world. This is a story of, 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 of two Birminghams, weirdly enough, uh, Birmingham in Alabama and Birmingham in the UK. Uh, there we are. Alabama and the UK. Let's talk. Why, why Birmingham? Well, um, because the, the, there's kind of a few people, a few various people, and, and indeed organisations who who are sometimes attributed to the invention of the windscreen wiper. Um, George J. Capewell um, is is the first, and he his 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 invention. Well, we'll we'll talk about his invention and his his relationship to windscreen wipers momentarily, but. Um, uh, he he originated actually oh, okay he was born in and didn't spend very much time in uh, Birmingham in in the UK Birmingham in England in the Midlands, um, Mills Munition Limited also as you can see from the back of this bloody gun uh, also Birmingham UK Mills Munitions uh, had a, a, a design had some involvement in a design for uh, an early design for windscreen wipers, um, uh, Joseph Hoffman uh, a Polish. Uh, composer d d and, and pianist, I believe. Uh, d also, windscreen wiper is not any relationship to any Birmingham, to my knowledge. Although maybe at some point the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra performed one of his pieces. Who knows? Um, and then Mary Anderson, who uh, originated from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Also, there, that, that's not the only people because there are also Robert A. Douglas and uh, James Henry Apjohn. Uh, Apjohn, by the way, is uh, a is Welsh for son of John. So I wonder, this is a Welsh connection, although uh, James is, uh, James Henry Apjohn, I believe, is a Londoner, but uh, Apjohn is very much a Welsh surname. App is like Mac. It's like MacDonald, um, um, uh, for those who are not familiar with, with Welsh uh, patronyms. Anyway, um, I digress. So all these people involved, all of these people have some sort of claim on the history of the windscreen wiper. So... Let us do some history. 6th of August, 1896 is where G.J. G. Capewell of, uh, originally of Birmingham, England, but actually uh, basically lived in, he was from Connecticut. I think he lived in Hartford or Waterbury, Connecticut for most of his life. Uh, yeah, sorry. Educated in Woodbury, Connecticut. Um, went to work at 15 for the Scoville Manufacturing Company in Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, and then in, became a, basically became an inventor, invented all sorts of stuff, including... Um, as might be relevant to a later cutaway gag in this episode, uh, the anti-friction roller bearing. Um, uh, he patented a type of anti-friction roller bearing, which is interesting. Anyway, I digress. Here is his proposal for what he termed the window cleaner. Uh, here it is. As you can see, um, it looks... It's, it's a very different looking machine <laughs> to what a windscreen wiper actually is. And this is why I say, yes, this patent was was, was placed um, in August 1896, but it does not have any, li it doesn't really owe any lineage to the modern windscreen wiper. So it's a window cleaner. It's a device designed to clean windows, but it, it, it bears no resemblance to the, to the, the, the thing that you might, expect to see as a as a as a, as a, uh, a windscreen wiper so let's jump forward to march 1903 and again this is not mary anderson's invention this is robert a douglas's invention so 12th of march 1903 now this is a slightly more familiar looking device but again it's 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 closer in design but not it doesn't have the counterweight and the counterweight and that type of the, the counterweight, as you'll see, as I'm going to show you the next uh, image, is not quite. This again is does not really have any relationship to the lineage of the modern um, windscreen wiper, but it's closer certainly. And and, and again, R. A. Douglas, Robert Douglas here, um, locomotive cab window cleaner. So this is again like uh, so we've got window cleaner, locomotive cab window cleaner. Um, Jump to uh, a month, what is that? A month later, March, April, May, June. Three months later, March, April, May, June. Two, three, I, I, I can't do maths. A couple of months later, 18th of June, 1903, and we have um, Mary Anderson's patent for a window cleaning device. Again, window cleaning device, window cleaner. They're, they're, none of them are calling them wipers yet. They're window, it's a window cleaning device. 
this is very much it has the counterweight right, let me let me get let me john madden some stuff on here let me just uh, get the old john madden up because let me just draw so you have a firstly you have a very it's a much it's a much better drawing folks it's a much better communicated patent uh, you have here the wiping device that I why oh it's because I've got my Wacom backwards. Uh, you have here a wiping device, uh, and uh, so you have the wiper here, which is obviously a wiper. This is a, this is a wiping thing here. You can see it's, it's got a lovely thing showing wiped area uh, as the thing moves this way. Um, but you also have a counterweight. Here is a counterweight. This is critical, and the pivots around here B, uh, and you can see uh, here's B here. And within this, you have just a kind of a lever that allows you to then control it. So you have the lever inside that is, is where you do the rotation. This is, and as I'll show you with a, a, a little bit in the, in the video, actually, in, in, when we go back to the museum, this is very much the lineage of the modern windscreen wiper. But it's not the only, you know, we talked about lots of names there. Another patent was placed in 1903. There was a huge surge of these things all in 1903. Um, October 1903, and this one is in, this is a British patent, not an American, not a US patent. This is a, the um, provisional specification, an apparatus for cleaning carriage, motor car, and other windows uh, by James Henry Apjohn. However, this is a device that you can see bears no resemblance to the modern windscreen wiper. It's a pulley system that draws a, um, a wiper across the glass, hugely complex and unnecessary mechanism um very difficult to incorporate into a a um into a, a motor vehicle certainly but it'd be even difficult for a locomotive so uh, and this is like carriage windows I almost i think imagining the side the windows of carriages on the side you know it's just it's this it's clear that this is a it's it's not a very good <laughs> it's not a very good system sorry henry apjohn uh, james henry apjohn um yes so so there we go. That is the lineage of the windscreen wiper. Um, so you have, you know, you've got the, you've got uh, George Capewell's, you've got um, Robert Douglas's, you've got James Henry Apjohn's, but really the, 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 the one that owes its lineage to the modern windscreen wiper is, is Mary Anderson's. And a little bit on Mary Anderson while, while we're here, you know, talk, talk about Mary Anderson. Um, Mary, she, it's, she, from this point on, it's a bit sad, really, because manufacturers just didn't have any interest in her innovation. I think I'll talk about this in, in the video momentarily. No interest in her innovation. Um, uh, it was passed, her idea was passed over, just just very little interest in it. Um, it was considered that it wouldn't be uh, able to be, um, it, just wouldn't, it wouldn't be any value in, in, in kind of, uh, any commercial value in this. Um, and nevertheless, within the lifetime of her patent, so her patent um, kind of was still valid until 1920. It was a 17-year patent. Not convinced. I know why it was only 17 years. Um, like vehicles with her precise design of windscreen wiper, very close to her windscreen wiper, um, started popping up pretty frequently. And indeed, before that, the the device that I'm the the train that I'm going to show you in this that, that is the that as I will eventually identify as the earliest in the museum that I could find that had a windscreen wiper from 1915 so five years before the expiry of her patent uses her design so I I, I yes I, I think there's more to be told about this story as ever though and I'll kind of make this point uh, elsewhere in the video just a, a serial lack of interest in her life and what she got up to whereas the focus and attention that the Brunels and the Stevensons get, the biographies, the, you know, the obsession, uh, uh, and fine, you know, rightly, but why aren't we applying that that interest into into the women of history? Um, and I think this goes from much, much further beyond railways. Um, I think it's, it's relevant. Anyway, back to me meandering around uh, aimlessly. So, Mary Anderson, um, she was, uh, it's, uh, in a way, this, this, the, the the invention of the windscreen wiper, there aren't, there aren't any windscreen wipers on Mallard there. Um, the invention of the windscreen wiper is a story of two Birminghams. Uh, Birmingham, UK, and Birmingham, Alabama in the US. Um, May Anderson was from Birmingham, Alabama, and she, uh, she, I mean, she did all sorts. She, she, with her family, built a mansion. Uh, it was a real estate developer in that sense, built a mansion and then sent, like, the, 
you know, sold off bits of it to people. Uh, then she went to be a rancher for a bit, came back to Birmingham, and then on a trip to, um, on a trip to New York in the early 19, like 1902 or something, it was winter, she was in a tram in a streetcar, and she saw that uh, ice frost was building up on the windscreen. And the driver had to either stop or at least sort of jimmy the window open and scrape the stuff off and they couldn't really could do a very good job. And she asked the driver about this and the driver's response was, oh, just, that's how it is, that's what happens. And so she went away and she, she was sort of, sort of ostensibly titled herself an entrepreneur. She had an idea, oh, I'll, 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 I'll do something about that. She wasn't an engineer. She teamed up with an engineer back in, back in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, thank you, that's loud. And then came up with an idea for a mechanical device uh, a bit like the one behind me on this, um, this is an LNWR, this is a Liverpool unit, is it? Or is it a, might be a, might be a LNWR suburb, Southern Suburban, let me go and go with. Let's get an age for this, because that's, that's a fairly old set of, what's that, that's 1915? What's the air clock? It's the electric motor coach. Um, uh, oh, okay. It is LNWR, good. Um, anyway, sorry, so that's 1915, so that's one of the older windscreen wipers we've got here. She came up with a device that looked pretty, pretty similar to this thing. Um, and, but it was mechanical, you, you had to operate it yourself. But it was spring-loaded in much the same way that this one is. You know, this one is operated, you can see there's a lever. Well, you can't see. I'm going to do some B-roll to show you the lever. It's just very similar to this, mechanically operated to just wipe the window clean of whatever loam had sprayed upon it. Um, and so that's 1915, okay. <laughs> Anyway, so she, she came up with that idea, uh, got it patented in, patented in 1903. It was the early days of um, the automotive industry because she had focused, it was the US, she had focused, she had spotted it on a streetcar, but really noticed it on, um, on you know, thought there was a market for it in the automotive industry, but the automotive industry um, was still kind of in its early days. And so there was, when she went look, look for investment, for investors to actually buy this patent or to, to kind of invest in it, uh, none were interested. They just saw it as like, oh, that's a weird little tiddy. That's not a hugely interesting, like, well, it's not a very interesting, what? It's just a little thing. It's not that useful. It's never going to kick off. It's not going to be, you know, it's just not going to bring in the numbers. Uh, and so they didn't invest. Um, and the patent then expired 17 years later, which was the length of the patent grant, which is also a bit weird. Um, so that was... 1915. Can we find an older set of windscreen wipers? I'm not sure we can because that's pretty early on. Um, there were, she wasn't the only one though because there were a few people who patented a windscreen wipers in, in 1903. Actually, arguably the first screen wiping invention was in 1896. Um, was it Colwell? But it was not, it was a bit rubbish and I have to say it doesn't, I don't, I don't trace that in the lineage of the windscreen wiper. It's a a wiping device, but it was a bit, a bit rudimentary. Uh, the first one that resembled the, the, the thing that the design, the patent that resembles the wipers that we see today, one of them was Mary Anderson's. The other one came from uh, a chap in Birmingham in the UK, uh, whose name I'm going to pop up in orange underneath now, because um, I don't remember. Um, and he, that was also 1903 for a similar, but but that one was for. Yeah, it was, it was a slightly different design, and I, and I don't think, again, I'm, the lineage of that compared to... But it's funny that they all popped up in 1903. Um, anyway, so yeah, the invention was not credited to Mary Anderson for a long time because no one really picked it up and ran with it, even though lots of similar devices started appearing um, soon after. So uh, yeah, patents definitely a way to uh, protect your IP. <laughs> Anyway, let's continue our hunt for windscreen wipers. Oh, there's a GWR um, motor car behind us with a, a very simple looking wiper. And what year will that be from? I think that's 1920s, isn't it? So if I walk along here, uh, we'll get an age. We'll get an age of that. We're still looking. I'm, I'm, what'd be fun is if I can find a steam locomotive with a windscreen wiper, but I'm not sure we will find that. Um, anyone else who's in here? So that's 1934. Oh, it's much later. Okay, so 1915, LNWR's Ehrlichan um, motor car, uh, still very much uh, the, ve the vehicle to beat. What else have we, what, are there, what else is older than that? Hmm, I think 1915 might be difficult to beat, you know. What else, if you can find a steam loco with windscreen wipers, that'd be good. Can we do it? That's the question. Uh, uh, yeah. Ah. 
1964 is the bullet train. That, that Shinkansen has wipers, but that's obviously not old. <laughs> Relatively, but not that old. There's so much noise going on in the construction estimate for the Wonder Lab that's, that's still in the process of being constructed. Um, I'm here next to, I think it's a BR Standard 8 cab that's just been placed here unceremoniously. No windscreen wipers. Even though it's a fairly modern locomotive, no windscreen wipers. If I plod into the quiet of my favourite spot in the museum, the wonderful uh, warehouse, um, I, I failed in my hunt to find windscreen wipers on a steam locomotive. So the question is, can I find any windscreen related paraphernalia in the warehouse? I always find new stuff in here. Can I find, oh, also, some things have moved around in here, actually. Golly, I'm going to continue my hunt for windscreen wipers. For, for fans of, of Well As A Problem podcast, here, here is a, it's a roller bearing. Look, it's a fancy Timken bearing. It was in the episode about East Palestine derailment. There, look, bearings. <laughs> Someone's stolen the Class 84. It's gone. Windscreen wipers on a Delta. Windscreen wipers. I'm standing here next to a fine model of a lovely NER loco. Yeah, you see the front over there on that this kind of weird, weird like bridge plinth. And no windscreen wipers. And in fact, I've looked around the whole of the warehouse. I can find not a single steam locomotive with windscreen wipers, which begs the question, and I bet you'll find some US watchers of the show, I bet you'll be able to find some, but can anyone watching this find and send me, this is the first of your challenges tonight, find and send me a picture of a steam locomotive with windscreen wipers from the UK. Go, challenge one. It's pinging and flashing. Do it. And as if, just as I'm leaving the warehouse, what do I see? On this King class here, I'll show it in B-roll, modelled are some little windscreen wipers. So as you were, challenge, well, you know what, continue to do so, but I have found some on a little, on this, on King George V here, this, this King class, which means I'm going to go back out into the Great Hall and see if I can spot windscreen wipers on the King class they've got because I think it's a King class or is it a Hall class? In any case, I'm going to go and have a look. Tiny little model windscreen wipers. <laughs> Pondering at the start of the episode, you know, how, how many inventions that women have made do we not think of? The other thing, of course, is that women have traditionally been excluded from the, you know, certainly in, in yon olden days of the railways, were excluded from, from working at all on the railways, but that fairly quickly subsided. We had railway workers, you know, whether it was operating level crossings, uh, operating, you know, working in stations, clerical work, and eventually driving locomotives and doing, and, and doing some manual work. Where, you know, with all the whiz gigs and bits and pieces and little fiddles and tricks and things that have been invented, you know, in a room like this full of them, absolutely full of these sorts of uh, inventions, creations, all sorts, how many of them have inventors that we've completely neglected to recall, remember, uh, record, um, and have their name for posterity? Um, because it is important. The reason it's important is because if parts of our, you know, if, if, if parts of society, whether it's women or whether it's people of colour, whoever it happens to be, are excluded from the history of our railways, then they're going to struggle to necessarily see a future in our railways too, which means that we're reducing the amount of people we are bringing into the industry, reducing the talent and reducing how well we can solve the future's problems. Very straightforward. Um, if you don't have diverse teams, if you don't have teams that represent society, then we're not going to solve the problems that society has. Um, so, my second challenge to everyone is, can you go and find as many women railway inventors as you can find send me them and we will profile them i will do research into them and we will talk about them in future rail matters that's my challenge so it's a it's a short one um but i my challenge to you is to go and do that now i'm gonna go and have a look another look at the uh, at the gwr uh steam will go outside and see if it's got windscreen wipers on the other side so i was looking on one side and it didn't but as I walk past this King Class model again, there is a windscreen wiper on there, so let's go have a look. So as I go under here, and literally walk underneath what is not a King Class, it is in fact, I think, a Star Class. Is that one of the classes of GWR steam locomotive? Anyway, here is above me, look. It's my forehead, and the underside of a steam locomotive. Um, 
why did I come down here when the when Schumacher was up top? Well, because it makes for an interesting shot, you know, even though my face is still filling up most of it. The canvas is big face, but with extra fun stuff behind. Oh. There. So if I go around this side, because I know there isn't one on the other side, if I go around this side, am I going to find a pair of windscreen wipers? Or even just a single windscreen wiper? And the answer is no, no windscreen wipers. Lodestar is 1907, so if it had had windscreen wipers, it would have been the oldest vehicle in here with wipers, but it has no wipers. So, the LNWR's electric multiple unit, actually it's not a multiple unit, it's just a single car, but uh, it's the motor car of, their multiple, of a multiple unit, currently holds it. It holds it. So there we go. 1915. <laughs> Uh, can anyone find another challenge? There are another challenge. Can anyone find anything older than 1915? Any railway vehicles older than 1915 with windscreen wipers? Go. Literally the newest, well, ish, Vignor Tornado and uh, others, uh, the newest ish steam locomotive in, in, in the UK, the last kind of mainline locomotive built as part of a proper full production run. Evening Star, no windscreen wipers. It's not quite the end of the episode yet, though. Despite all the mild chaos of this, what will be a very short episode, um, there is one other thing I'm going to do, which is... As Tim and I have already done, is uh, go and experience the VR experience for the Flying Scotsman, because it's brilliant. I really recommend everyone goes and enjoys it. It's really good fun. Um, look, it's austerity, but with it, someone stolen its bottom. That's a shame. Anyway, um, VR time. It's over, it's over here. You, you go and stand in a, in a, a little holding pen for a bit. Um, and there's a big green thing. It's, it's hard. It's, you can, it's next to all the nameplates. You can't miss it. It's over in this corner. You go out. It's in a, in a couple of shipping containers. And you think, oh, this is a bit. What's, what's this about? And actually, it's, it's brilliant. So I'm going to be very naughty and, 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 and do what Tim did and film the film go again. But it's good. It's really good. Before you is my famous A1 Pacific steam locomotive design, Flying Scotsman. Brilliant a second time around. I did that with Tim first time and it was terrific fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's really, really brilliant. Like it's just a, it's just a shipping container. Uh, it's fantastic. Thanks so much. Have a nice day. Bye now, bye. And there we have it. Um, so on that ending, as I make my way back uh, after a little lunch break of mine to my day job, um, it only remains for me to say uh, thanks to all the audio only listeners. Um, uh, for listening to this weird episode. Very weird, probably very short. Um, and uh, the, the ads, the usual ads, um, patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis um, for, to support this sort of thing happening or also to comment on whether you <laughs> thought this was rubbish um, and want me to do something different. Um, paypal.me slash Gareth Dennis for loose change and abuse. Uh, the Discord is at garethdennis.uk slash Discord uh, where you can continue the chat hello everyone in the chat continue that chat going sorry it's not a live one um, and of course there is merchandise gathdennis.co.uk slash merch you can go and get rail matter merch which is still surreal to me um, very strange um, but you can do that next week 
what is next week? Episode 172. Well, there is a, 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 a train for the, the 172. It might be a news episode, actually. I can't quite remember. But we have some good guests coming up. Um, so... <laughs> Future Gareth, and um, what, what what is what's what's happening? What, what's happening next time? Do tell. No, we have a, no. We do have a guest. We do have a guest. It's not a news episode. Um, it's episode 172, a case study in being wary of the hydrogen hype. We're going to be talking about how hydrogen in ho- uh, in, in in the subject of home heating um, is a good canary in the coal mine for the hydrogen hype we've we've got. Uh, on our railways in terms of traction and other things. So yeah, a, a, a cautious tale. Uh, Juliet Phillips um, from uh, E3G is going to be coming and, and, and uh, talking to us um, about that, uh, which which should be very good. I'm looking forward to it. Ooh. Interesting. Well, thank you very much indeed, future Gareth. Um, it only remains for me to say to all of you, from the top of this footbridge here, which I'm going to spin around and show everyone, look, it only remains for me to say, Cheerio, everyone. Cheerio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. U